Kia ora and welcome to our values-based game design. In this game, we're going to develop a game based on our traditional values. The value we're going to choose today is kaitiakitanga or guardianship. And our game is going to be about a player collecting rubbish and litter from the earth, keeping our environment clean and tidy. Now, before we start our game, it's really important that you log in. Uh, sign up an account so that we can save our game to the cloud and give it a really good name. Okay, the first thing we need to do is click on create. Once we've created our project here, we're going to give it a name. I'm going to use the name pick up your rubbish or we'll pick up the rubbish. Either one is fine. Now our project is named. If we look around our scratch layout, we'll notice there's several areas. On the left, we have our coding area, our costumes, and our sounds. In the middle, we have our coding area, our coding zone. On the right, at the top, we have our backdrop and our stage. This is where our actors will perform and where the game will be played. Down here, we can create new sprites and add code to our sprites. And in the far right, we can add backgrounds and backdrops that give our stage um, beauty or make our stage look better. The first thing that we need to do is bring in a brand new backdrop to give our stage some life. So we're going to head down to the Choose Backdrop and we're going to give it a click, double click. Now I'm going to use this forest back backdrop because I'm going for that environment look. You can choose any one you want, but I think this one suits it perfectly. The next thing we want to do is create our maze. To create our maze, we need to make sure that we're still selecting our backdrop. We need to head to the top left and click on backdrops. In here, we can edit the costume for any object, sprite or backdrop. Now, I'm going to click on the line tool because I want to draw some maze lines. And now I need to change the color to make sure it's a strong color that really pops off the backdrop. Because the backdrop's green, I'm going to go for a color like purple. And then I'm going to draw, using my line tool, a few maze lines. Here we go. I'm going to drag it up, perfect, I'm going to do one more here, and I'm going to do a third one over here like that, nice and simple maze. I'm also going to click on the code box here, which will take us back to our coding area. Scratch the cat is a bit too big to fit into our maze, comfortably. I want our actor um, scratch the cat to be a bit smaller. So what we do is we click on scratch the cat, sprite one, and we go to size, and we're going to take the size down to about 60%. Perfect. I'm also going to take scratch the cat and move it down to the start of our maze. Now we're going to add some rubbish sprites, and we're going to add a rubbish bin. To add our rubbish sprites, we're going to head down to the bottom here, we're going to click on choose sprite and I've managed to find a sprite here that looks kind of like scrunched up rubbish and that's called the cloud sprite and I'm going to get, double click on it and bring it into my game. Now it's a bit too big so I'm going to change the size. Let's try 30%. Perfect. So change it to 30%. We're also going to rename it by clicking in this space here in the cloud name and we're going to call it rubbish awesome and you can see the name changed here too i want to create three of these so i can right click and go duplicate and it'll create another piece of rubbish called rubbish 2. i'm going to right click and duplicate again and create rubbish 3 and now i've got three pieces of rubbish in my game that my character needs to collect now we want to create the end of our game, which is the rubbish bin. So to do that, we're going to draw it ourselves. Custom design. 
We're going to head down to the Sprite, choose a Sprite button. We're going to move up to the Paint button and give it a click. Awesome, you'll see we've created this new Sprite now. Now, let's start off with the Box tool. We're going to create a nice boxed outline. I'm also going to change the fill to something closer to the orange color. Something like that. In the middle, you'll notice there's this little center button. That's a center space. That symbol there, that center symbol, is the center of our object. If I draw it to the side, when I move my object around, it's going to behave a little weird. So I need to make sure that when I'm drawing my rubbish bin, it's roughly in the center of that space. Now, don't worry if it's too big, because we can always shrink the size using this tool here which lets us change the size as we want. We can also use the size scale here later on. Now, perfect, we've got a nice rectangular rubbish bin, but I want some text in there. So I'm going to click on this text button here. I'm going to change the fill to black. And I'm going to click right here. And then I'm going to type in the word bin. Now, I'm going to click the um, mouse arrow tool and I'm going to drag that into the center. You can even make it a bit bigger if you want by dragging this corners. Now I'm going to click back onto code so that we're always in our coding area. I'm going to drag the bin down into the far right side, the end side, and I'm going to change this to about 50%. Perfect. Now we have a player, we have rubbish, and we have a bin. I'm now going to rename the bin, so making sure you're still selecting on the bin there, Sprite. We're going to name this bin. This makes it much easier for us to code. We're going to add some code now. So to add our code, we're going to click on Scratch the Cat, also known as Sprite 1. We can rename the Sprite if we want to later on. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to create an event. An event is a piece of code that activates when something happens. So for our event, we're going to use when the green flag is clicked. This event is triggered whenever the start button here, the green flag, is, is clicked. Now we need to create a variable. A variable is a data storage location. Right? It's something that can hold different bits of information. Kind of like a lunchbox can hold food, variables can hold data such as numbers and text. So we're going to click on the variable code draw and we're going to head up to the button that says make a variable and click on that. We now need to give our variable a really good name, so I'm going to call mine rubbish. This variable will be used to tell our player how much rubbish has been collected. We now can see that rubbish has been added to our variable list. Our variables, the list of variables. We're now going to click on set my variable to zero and drag it underneath the events, the event that we just added before. I'm going to click on the white down arrow and select the rubbish variable. The reason we do this is so that when a player restarts the game, it restarts the variable, resets the variable called rubbish back to zero. Now, we need to add some code that puts the player back into the starting position when a new game is started. We're going to head to the motion code draw and we're going to drag the go to X and Y code block and drag it underneath our variable. And this code moves a character instantly to its this coordinate. Right? And this coordinate is default to the current location of Scratch. You notice when I move Scratch around, how the numbers change here. Now we need to create the main game loop. This is the space where we're going to add most of our code that we want to activate when the game is running. So we're going to go to Control Code Draw and we're going to drag a forever block underneath our go to X and Y code block. Now, we're going to create our movement. Head to Motion Code Draw. We're going to drag Point Towards Mouse Pointer and drag that inside of our Forever Loop. Now, 
we're going to grab the move 10 steps and drag that underneath the point towards mouse pointer. If you click on this input space, we can change this number. The bigger the number, the faster Scratch moves. We're going to change this number to 3. That way, Scratch the Cat moves at a reasonable pace. Now, we're going to add in some code that lets Scratch the Cat detect the maze wall. If it hits the maze wall, then the game is over and the game needs to be restarted. So to do this, we're going to go to the control code draw. We need to drag in an if statement, also known as a conditional statement. This is a piece of code that only activates the code inside of it when its condition is true. For example, in this one, we're going to say, if scratch touches the wall, go back to the beginning. So we're going to drag an if block, if then block, and we're going to drag it inside the forever loop underneath the move three steps block. We're then going to go to the sensing code draw, and we're going to drag the touching color. And if you notice, this touching color input matches the input shape of the if then block. This means that they can be put together. So we're going to drag the left side of the touching color block inside of the if then input. And you'll notice they'll snap together perfectly. We're then going to click on the color circle here. We're going to head to the bottom and click on the eyedropper tool. We can use this tool to accurately select the color of our maze walls. When you find the color, you just click again. And now the color has been changed to match the color of the maze walls. So this reads, if touching color purple of the maze walls, then execute all the code inside of this conditional statement. So what we can do now, go to the motion code draw and drag the go to X and Y. Now your numbers may be a bit funny, a bit different because we've had it, we've been experimenting with Scratch the Cat. So what we do is head down to any numbers that are incorrect and just make sure they match our starting go to X and Y block. We now need to add some code that allows Scratch to detect whether or not it's collected, she's collected enough rubbish and what to do when you've collected enough rubbish touching the bin. In this code, we're going to make Scratch the Cat make a noise, say something, and then stop the game. The first thing we need to do is go to Control Code Draw, and we're going to drag another if then block inside the forever loop, but underneath our other if block, like so. We are now going to go to the Operator's Code Draw. We need to add some Boolean logic, some code that allows us to look at two different conditions and make sure they're both true before the code inside of the if block can be activated and executed. So we're going to grab the an operator. This code says something and something must be true. So you notice they look the same again. We can drag and drop them inside. We're then going to go to the sensing code draw and we're going to take the touching mouse pointer and we're going to put it on the left side of the and block. You'll notice that you can put two conditions inside of this block. We're going to click on the down pointer, the white down arrow, and we're going to select the bin. So we're saying if touching the bin and collected all the rubbish, the game is over, or you've beaten the level. We're now going to go to our operator code draw, and we're going to bring in the equals operator. And we're going to drag it on the right side of our and block. Now, we can use the equal operator to compare two variables or numbers together, or strings. In this case, we're going to say, if you're touching the bin and our variable rubbish is equal to three, then you've beaten the level. We're then going to go to our variables code draw. 
and we're going to drag the rubbish variable into the left side of our equals operator. And on the right side of our equals operator, we're going to change this number to match the amount of rubbish we have in our level, which is 3. If you add more rubbish to your level, you need to make sure you change this number to match. You need to make sure you change this number to match. Now, that's all finished. We can now add the code that will execute when Scratch finishes the game. We're going to head to the sound code draw. And we're going to take the play sound meow until done. We're going to go to the looks code draw. And we're going to take the say hello for two seconds and put it inside of our earth block. Now, let's change this to something better like you win. Or any other positive reinforcement for our character. It could be you rock or something in our native languages. Finally, we're going to go to the events code draw or the control code draw. And we're going to drag the stop all. This will make the game completely stop all of its code, which will mean the game is over. Only put this block in if this is the last level in your game. Now, if you test your game, you'll notice that nothing happens to the rubbish bin, uh, to the rubbish. Nothing is happening to the rubbish because we need to add the code that hides the rubbish and also tells the variable rubbish to increase by one. We're going to head to our rubbish variable. We're going to add some more code here that's going to tell Scratch to add one to the variable and to make the rubbish disappear when it's being collected. So the first thing we need to do is go to the events code draw and drag in the when green flag is clicked. Now we're going to go to looks and we're going to bring in the show. We need to scroll down a little. The show. This shows the sprite if it's been previously hidden. We need to bring this code in here so that after, when you restart the game, all the rubbish reappears. We now need to add our main loop that keeps running forever. So we're going to go to control and drag the forever loop underneath the show block. We're now going to create a condition that the rubbish is going to constantly look for, which is if touching sprite one, which is scratch, the cat, then add one to our variable and hide. We're going to go to control. We're going to drag in an if then block inside of our forever loop. We're going to go to sensing code draw and drag the touching mouse pointer inside of our if statement. Now if block. Click on the white down arrow and select our player sprite. We need to hide the sprite. So go to looks code draw, scroll down, Find the hide block and drop it inside of our if block. We're then going to go back down to variables, variable code draw, and we're going to drag the change variable by one. The reason we want to use this one is if we use set, it will always change it to one. And we need to make sure that rubbish equals the total amount of rubbish collected by the end. So we're going to add or change our variable by one. You need to click on the down white arrow and select our rubbish variable. Now, that's all the code needed for our rubbish sprite. To add this code to all of our other rubbish objects, we need to right click and duplicate our code. We can then drag this code into other sprites. Make sure you delete these ones. Let's test our game. Let's run it in full screen and press the play button. Now when we touch the rubbish, it should add one to it and hide away. Perfect. Awesome. Now We've collected all the rubbish in our environment. If we get to the rubbish bin, you win. Look at that. Perfect. 
congratulations everyone you've just made your first values based game in scratch to mickey